so often, especially when you guys have to run teams, the big focus comes on management. And one of my favorite quotes, oh, there's a lot of quotes today, is that uh, management is making sure that your organization moves up the ladder. Leadership is making sure the ladder is leaning against the right wall. And there's two different things there. We put a lot of focus when we evaluate ourselves as people and as leaders on how we get people to do things, I think, how we are as managers. We can't lead other people so we can lead ourselves. And what I love is that Joanne always makes me that whole why. It freaking drives you nuts, I know. But we think, we skip ahead a lot. We don't know why we think things. We don't, we've lost the word why. Somewhere along the lines, we, we let it go. Because I ask you guys two interesting things about yourselves. Well, how are you gonna make, get teams to motivate it to go and do things if you can't come up with two interesting things about yourself? And you'll think of lots of them tonight, but some of you just moved past that already. Two things about yourself. What is the single happiest moment of your life? All right, what mistake, from which mistake do you learn the most? These are things about ourselves that we should be experts on. We should be our own best subject. And I work with students particularly for years, and we're our own worst subject. So one of the things that I love with, with what Joanne's talking about there is, I is important, and not to be selfish, and not to be self-absorbed, but because you can't get the most out of other people if you're not operating at your best. And there's lots of stuff in the world that's beyond our control. There's tons of stuff in the world that's beyond our control. But I promise you there's more in the world that's, that is within our control. And as hard as it is, the first thing is how we think. We are in control of how we think, and that can change a lot of things. So I always like the fact that add one line makes a line of support things. Uh, I think that comes down to it is, is that you're right, you hear it a lot, and you understand it. We don't do anything. And we might do it for a little while. Robin Sharma, I found interesting, um, I don't agree with everything he says, but there's one thing he says that it takes 40 days to fundamentally change something in your life. Whether it's getting up at 5 a.m. or it's exercising, it actually takes 40 days for your brain to just get used to it. These messages, we often hear and we often nod, but if you don't use something within a couple of days after hearing it, it goes right out of our mind. As a matter of fact, it goes very quickly. For instance, we talked about, did you talk about process this morning? And then the next group went up and didn't talk about process, but everybody nodded when I said, oh, we should do process. Everybody nods when we hear these messages, but we don't actually do them. It takes a tremendous amount of effort. If you really want to know, like, how do we actually make it happen, I think it has to be an incredible commitment to 40 days of doing some of it. Because we try it a little bit and we let it go, it actually takes a tremendous amount of effort. For 40 days, say why you're awesome every day. For 40 days, live the life you know you're capable of, because often there's a gap between the person we want to be and the person that we are. And we get down about that. Do this stuff. Think like this consciously for 40 days. And the best way to do it is to get help with it. And by that I mean find a friend and make it a challenge. I've got our buddy Blake wanted to get up at, at what he calls entrepreneurly. So he wanted to get up at 5.30 a.m. So they have a group of four guys who call, they take turns, they call each other every morning, and they're not allowed to hang up the phone until they hear the person going to the bathroom. So they actually, I know this is awful, they actually have to hold the phone out because then you know that you're up and out of bed. They have four friends of theirs who will not let them fail. And I think that's a big piece. We have to be conscious and we have to make sure that we actually change things relatively dramatically, but dramatically can mean a little bit. Dramatically can mean a little bit. That's what it is. We've all heard them before and we might try them for a couple of days, but we forget. Get some friends on your side and make that real commitment. It really So does. I was doing a first year class for, um, a first year class at U of T, and it was the first day, and I talked about leadership, and tell some of the stories I tell you at the very end today, and a girl walks up to me at the end of the class, and she says, I don't get it, which is exactly what every single teacher ever wants to hear, I don't get it, and I said, well, what don't you get, and she said, I don't understand leadership anymore, and I said, don't worry, we have the whole semester to figure out what leadership means, and she said, no, no, I understood it before I came, and now I listen to you, and now I don't understand it anymore. And she was from China. She was an international student. She came all the way around the world, and she said, where I'm from, the smartest people are supposed to be leaders. And we determine who the smartest people are by who has the best grades. So we just make the people with the best grades the leaders. So listening to you now, I think leadership means something different. Could you explain what leadership means to me in plain English? And of course, I just like, oh yeah, no problem. And I open my mouth. And have you ever been asked a question that you're certain you know the answer to until somebody asks it? Like, why are you interesting? Like, you all knew why you're interesting until someone actually was like, why are you interesting? And then people were like, you guys are like, uh, uh. And that happened to me. Like, she's like, what's leadership? And I went, uh. And I realized I have all these complex answers to what leadership is. It's in my title. I ran a program. I now have a company with leadership in its name. I had no answer 
what it meant to me. I had all these complex and important answers, but not the most simple one. What does it mean to me? And so that messed me up, because leadership is an ideal I want to embody in my life. Like when I live my life, I want leadership to be a part of who I am and what I embody and how I think and how I talk and how I feel. So I thought, okay, I'm going to think of all of the ideals that I want to embody in my life. So I went home and I wrote something like, uh, I want to embody respect. I want to embody equity. I want to embody justice and fairness and transparency and truthfulness. These are ideals that I want to be about me. And I wrote them all down and then I asked, if someone walked up to me and said, can you explain what that word actually means, could you do it? And for almost every single one of them, I went, <coughs> no. Like, as I wrote it down, I thought, now I can do it. But I realized that I was trying to live my life, living up to ideals that I couldn't define. And if we don't spend more time trying to define the things that we want to define us, I think we're always going to feel unfulfilled. That question is, is, why don't we embody it? Because I think we feel like we're chasing something really hard. But if we don't know what it is, we'll never know when we catch it. So here's what I want you guys to do. Sorry, you men and women to do. I should stop saying that. I want you to write down two ideals that you want to embody in your life. I want you to think, because if this is what if you want to be leaders, what you're trying to do is live up to the things that you idealize. I want you to write down two things, two ideals that you want to embody in your life. And they're like things like respect, truthfulness, transparency, justice. What are yours? I want you to write them down. And then I want to ask you, if somebody walked up to you and said, what does that mean? Simply, I want you to be able to define them. So I want you to write them down, and then we're going to take 10 minutes. And when we come back, I'm going to ask some of you guys, what are the ideals that you want to embody in your life, and how do you define them? And then in 10 minutes, we'll come back, we'll share a couple of them, and we're going to start the simulation. Does that work for you guys? But what I often found is that's one of those questions I can't believe we haven't asked ourselves consciously. What are the ideals I wish to embody in my life? Because you can't get them if you don't know what they are. And if you know what they are, but you can't define them, you'll never know when you got them. And feeling as if we haven't caught the things we're chasing, that makes us feel awfully bad about ourselves.